everybody. This is Guitar Virtuosos number 11. I am Artem Lirayet and I am a host of this video blog of the Guitar Virtuosos. Tonight we had the orchestra opening and it was completely sold out. There is uh, 1505 seats in the Tchaikovsky Hall and there was uh, not even one free seat there. I think it's huge success for the guitar. We're also happy to have this uh, wonderful conductor tonight, uh, Fabio Mastrangelo from Italy. This maestro is absolutely busy. He just arrived from St. Petersburg and then uh, tomorrow he goes back and then Four times in a week he appears in different cities of Russia conducting uh, different programs. So this guy is absolutely amazing and uh, he did his best uh, from those two rehearsals and uh, I think we all were very happy with the result. So. We started with the orchestra overture. It was uh, Leonor Number no. Three by Ludwig van Beethoven, and it was performed by the great Russian orchestra. I never heard about any other guitar festival to be accompanied by uh, New York Philharmonic or uh, Berlin Philharmonic, and this is what happens here at our festival in Moscow. So then I played my own arrangement of the Beethoven Violin Concerto, which I, which I just finished and uh, some things I was redoing during the last night because when you practice you can think okay it works but then you go to the rehearsal and then you understand that it doesn't work together with the orchestra. So it was a uh, really huge work for me and uh, finally I did it and I think uh, enlarging the guitar repertoire is very important for us guitarists so let's do more arrangements and let's do more uh, commissions for, uh, from the composer. tonight was just improvisation. Uh, well, actually, Nikita Koshkin wrote some cadences for me. Not some, but all of them. But uh, unfortunately, I had no time to learn it because it's difficult and they're pretty big. And I uh, just uh, remembered uh, another advice of Maestro Mikhail Bignon. He told me, like, the best cadenza is improvisation. If you can improvise, the best you can do is, is improvising. So I thought, the night before I I thought, okay, this is great advice. Uh, so uh, I did uh, improvisation, uh, taking some parts of the Koshkin cadences.
Second half was the beloved concerto di Anacoes, performed by uh, Ricardo Garayan. Ricardo was here at the very first festival in 2006 and we're really happy to have him here because uh, this is absolutely top level performer and a fantastic teacher and uh, apart from the performance of the festival he will do some master classes for our students which comes not only from Moscow but from the other parts of Russia sometimes really distant parts of Russia, uh, like Siberia, for example. So we started this time with the orchestra concert, and Every time we can hear Arne Hoyas during the orchestra nights and every time is very different and tonight was different as well. I was listening from the backstage and I think that the guy, the presenter of the concert, he was very, very right. He told me, you know, tonight Arne Hoyas was uh, in the Baroque style. Really? Yeah, and I think something, something was uh, Baroque in it. But um, my question is, did you ever think about it? Yeah. Uh, because for me, for me, Rodrigo is a very uh, Baroque composer. Mm -hmm. Whatever he writes, he always thinks about Baroque or he has this Baroque background all the time. Mm. What do you think about it? Yeah, yeah, they're totally right. Uh, I was uh, saying before about uh, the golden age, the Baroque and classical romantic music uh, influence in, in Rodrigo. You can really hear sometimes Scarlatti or Boccherini sure. and this kind of uh, jig dance like, you know, yeah. in, uh, in many of the motifs of the concertos. I totally agree with you. So prepare, preparing the voice, <laughs> you uh, were like working on that kind of Baroque style in, yeah. in the West. Yeah, okay. To, to me it was pretty easy since many years ago I started to study old music yeah. and play with the instruments. So to get an approach to, to this uh, concerto since that point of view it was pretty pretty easy and, and I think that it's pretty correct to do it. For me, I, I would love to have here every time different interpretation. Whatever mm -hmm. you play in the Baroque style or Romantic or uh, Flamenco yeah. I'd love to hear every time something something new, which is uh, exactly what happened tonight. Mm. And uh, thank you for that. Pleasure. Thank you. When the music is, is really good, it doesn't matter the way you play it, it will sound amazing. Yeah, I think it's uh, if you do it honest, mm. if you do it uh, from your heart, yeah, and exactly. then uh, that, there is no wrong interpretation. Mm. It's just uh, if it really touches you or not. It's very famous, you know, and uh, it's like a kind of mythos. So somehow it's like a, the person who is able to play this uh, is uh, really brave, somehow. But uh, I don't think that uh, it's really that uh, brave to play this uh, this concert. Okay, in terms of technique and so, it can be difficult. But I consider uh, some other concerts more difficult than another uh, voice. But uh, and has, some, has something really special that. Uh, uh, 
I don't know how to say it. It's a resemblance of Baroque music, for example, uh, even if some harmonies can, can be a little bit modern, but uh, it's somehow like a mixture between Baroque music and, and 20th century music, you know? So you have to play great, but at the same time musical and with the kind of Baroque or way of, of playing. This is, uh, I think, my, my opinion. Because I remember so really a lot of reminds uh, Scarlatti, the world of Scarlatti, or of course Adam Fuez, but also uh, the, this era of Occherini, etc., etc., the golden age in, in Spain. You know? So this is full of, uh, of energy and, and power. And this you have to show it uh, mixed with, uh, of course, the sweetness and, uh, and the romantic stuff, for example, in the second movement. It's really beautiful. Of course, you can think of uh, those uh, stories about that uh, Rodrigo lost uh, his son, or, and then uh, he's uh, showing so somehow the drama. Of course, uh, this is this is useful in, in order to play the the piece. But the point is to try to make it easy, to sound easy, and um, and not to uh, to be influenced by the technical stuff or story by Rodrigo or whatever. Because finally, music. Uh, is something that uh, you feel it, you make it yours, and then you show your music, your personality. And this is the, the most important thing. That's why I think that uh, even if every year I hear our voices play, and uh, each of us uh, will play a different version, because of course, even if we mm, agree with the general terms of how to play this concerto, uh, the other part is our personality. And this is, I think, the, the most important thing, not to, to have only one version, but your personal version. I started to, to play guitar when I was four, and I started as a popular musician, so I was not a classical guitarist at that time. I was playing for six years before starting at the conservatory and to be orthodox, let's say. <laughs> so uh, during this, those years I was playing in the right leg, normal position, because a uh, popular musician don't play on the left uh, leg. So it was when I entered the conservatory that I had to uh, shift my position, and then I, I felt really uncomfortable on, uh, on this, you know, because also since I was a child, uh, I was pretty fat, not anymore, but at that time I, I was, so it was really kind of hard in my back, you know, because of the position. So, so when I finished all my studies, well, I had to point out that uh, I was practicing at home like this, on my right leg, and then two or three days before the lesson, then I was changing <laughs> to show the teacher, but <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, the point is that when I finished uh, my last competition, I said, okay, I don't, I don't want, I don't have to demonstrate anything anymore. So I then changed to my comfortable position on that side. To me, the, the, the center, the gravity center of the guitar is, is somehow people think that it's the hole. And they set the guitar according to the, to the hole somehow. And uh, the hole is not really the center. Uh, to me, it's something like uh, the, the separation, the point where the, the, the finger bar meets the body of, of, the, of the guitar. So like this, even if this uh, arm looks a little bit higher or whatever, but it's resting on the case, so I'm not really tense, I'm not holding the instrument with a um, tension or something. And then all my, my arms are really natural, so I can do the best sound that I think that I can get from this instrument, and also for the left hand it's pretty easy. Only when you have to go to the highest positions, it's a little bit more uncomfortable, that's why I put the, I rest the, the guitar very near to my knee.
good the Assad brothers are. But uh, I think we should know that, first of all, they are absolutely great personalities. So open, so warm, absolutely great guys. And uh, what is important for me that I see that they have a huge family, huge union, and uh, they're all musicians. And uh, look at those pictures when they are with the, with the family, and, uh, and look at those faces. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Sergio Assad, which is called Back to Our Roots, and this was quite unusual because Sergio was playing the instrument he invented himself, he called it Sazuki, and uh, he was playing with a pick, and it was really doing this Arabic flavor for the music, because Back to Our Roots in Assad's meaning is uh, back to the Lebanese roots because uh, their grandfather came from Lebanon in the 19th century so it was completely Arabic influence in the music and uh, this Sasuki did a great job to do this very special flavor to the music Brothers was uh, pretty nervous about that performance because it was new for the orchestra and we had very few rehearsals. So they got really tired and had to leave. But promised to us that on 25th they're gonna do an uh, interview for our video blog. So let's just check out some parts of the performance of the Assad Brothers. Enjoy. Well, what can I say? It was a huge success. 
everybody has a big success and I think it's an absolutely fantastic start for the festival and I'm absolutely sure that all the other concerts will be on the same level and the same interest and uh, our closing concert is uh, already sold out as well so I'm absolutely happy for our instrument that uh, so much public comes to listen to us so thank you very much